This is the PR Podcast, a show about how public relations helps you tell your story to the world. We talk with great PR practitioners who have the skills, creativity, and just plain savvy to get their clients noticed. Now here's your host, Jody Fisher. Hey everyone, and welcome to the PR Podcast. I'm Jody Fisher. Thanks for joining us. Well, have you got yourself your PR Podcast plug yet? Um, this is the uh, feature we do at the top of every show. It's an opportunity for us PR people to plug ourselves. <laughs> I, I frequently say that we're, as PR people, we're good at plugging our clients or promoting our clients. We're really lousy at doing it for ourselves. So we're giving you a chance to toot your own horn here. Boy, when was the last time I said that? That sounds like a dad joke. Um, but in all seriousness, we want to hear about your passion project. Uh, it's not your nine to five. It's the thing that gets your juices flowing after the work is done, right? Maybe it's your, your blog, it's your newsletter, it's your cool TikTok channel, it's your cooking hobby. It's whatever thing that sort of like gets your motor running. Um, send it in to us and give us a chance to plug you at the top of an upcoming show. Either send me an email at jody at jodyfisherpr.com or reach out to us on one of my socials or the PR podcast socials. Let us know that cool thing you're doing and we will plug you at the top of an upcoming show. Now on with our show today and our very interesting guest, Liliana Petronava is leading Exilion, a strategic communications firm and communications agency. She is an executive with experience in tech companies and venture capital firms, offering her expertise in launching products elevating company and founder profiles, and improving public perception. She has a decade-plus experience in media and public relations. She's also a professional executive coach for startup founders and CEOs. Now, her strategies have earned her global coverage in elite media like Forbes, CNN, and Bloomberg, and she's an active contributor to Entrepreneur US and offers invaluable insights into the evolving business world. She is also, and I find this fascinating, developing Visa Boost, which is an innovative startup catering to immigrants. Lily, Liliana, welcome to the PR podcast. Wow, that is a great intro. Thank you so much, Jody. I'm so glad to be here. Let's talk about that last item first, Visa Boost. What is this? Well, you know, this is my, I think, a great example where I, it's an opportunity to combine two passions, a passion for PR and passion for entrepreneurship. Uh, and I really love your kind of... Um, idea to give people an opportunity to plug in their great, you know, <laughs> um, stories and projects they're doing. I think this is one of good examples where I'm trying to help people immigrate to U.S. with uh, great PR because some of the categories of U.S. immigration uh, and non-immigration like work visas are exceptional achievements visas like O-1, EB-1. Those are the visas that require a lot of criteria to be met. And one of the most several important criteria are actually in the media uh, recognition, so-called notability criteria. And I don't know if you're aware, but actually uh, each year over 300,000 people high-skilled professionals are trying to immigrate to US from all over the world, uh, applying for, for jobs um, and just applying for visas, uh, maybe because they're starting their own companies as well. And basically they need the media recognition to be able to prove their um, notability and their influ influence in their space of work. And of course, I'm targeting, you know, tech workers, entrepreneurs, uh, these categories, because uh, the other ones who also are eligible for exceptional U.S. visas are sports people, science people, um, and celebrities, of course. Uh, but I deal only with tech um, and business people. And, um, you know, I just recently... Like today in the morning, I saw a stat that U.S. is still on top of the list of the countries where people want to immigrate from all over the world um, and still like in, in the first, first place all over the globe. So I think with the current state of economy, with, you know, everything that's happening on the markets, U.S. will need more skilled, more passionate people who want to bring value to the country. And Visa Boost is there to help them move to U.S. and make their dream come true. 
That is really great. So how help me understand how you combine PR into mm -hmm. helping people navigate that visa process. Because it's, as you said, Byzantine and frustrating and just like the worst. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really interesting how U.S. still keeps, uh, you know, the first place in immigration uh, when it's much more easier to immigrate to Canada, U.K. or, you know, other first world countries. They just immensely simplified the immigration process in the recent years, and U.S. has yet not simplified the process. Uh, but I think this will happen. This will be changing in the next five to ten years. And um, PR is, you know, we are working with lawyers and immigration lawyers. We don't do like the uh, law services ourselves, but we help to compile an appealing portfolio and all the preliminary work that, you know, the research uh, that the person has to do to present to the immigration lawyer. Uh, and uh, we do the notability. Basically, we help people to publish their company stories, their personal profiles in the media to also add to the uh, portfolio and the application they will be giving to the immigration lawyers. Because we found that a lot of people, um, they come to immigration lawyers and they don't meet certain criteria. And oftentimes it's the notability and media presence. That's very often where, you know, those talented people, they just don't think about publicity that much, you know, um, and it's really very common, you, you see that, um, and uh, we just want to help them present themselves to the media, help them get coverage uh, in national media, they need like tier one uh, tier two publications to meet the level of this criteria. So they really have to be exceptional in any way that we can help them elevate in the press. And that's where PR really, really comes in handy. And I have to tell you that a lot of immigration lawyers, they are also seeing this um, necessity and looking for um, PR professionals to help the, their clients with this criteria. So I'm just meeting, I think I'm helping to complete this need and solve this problem for both the uh, people who want to immigrate, but and, and also the immigration lawyers who need their clients uh, to increase the success rate of their applications, work they're doing with a strong portfolio also of media uh, links and publications that are um, you know, recognized by USCIS. It's amazing to me that that even PR, um, that 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 PR and and notability, as you said, would mm -hmm. play a role in. I'm going to use the word legitimizing or accelerating or, you know, just giving the green light to someone who simply wants to come here and work <laughs> and contribute. <laughs> to our society and our country and our technology or, you know, whatever they want to do, whatever their skill is. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, and it's funny because you're, you're telling this story and I'm recollecting, it was just a couple of months ago that someone uh, who, you know, friend of a friend reached out to me and described just this kind of scenario. Um, they had a fellow who was a, an incredible scientist had invented, had all these like 600 patents or something like that. His visa was expiring and he needed just what you're describing to renew yeah. his visa. And it boggled my mind that why, why is this even a hurdle <laughs> that our government has put in the place, uh, in, in the path of, of people who are clearly accomplished. Um, but hmm. that's an amazing story about the, the, the company that you're creating. Let's pivot over to your other company, which is Exilion, um, which is a strategic communications firm. Tell me about what you do there. Uh, so I've started this company uh, around 2019, in the beginning of that year, when I quit my nine to five job and wanted to do more things that I think make sense. Uh, and I started to work very in a very complex and integrated communications field from the get-go. So it was not only media relations, but I did things like develop uh, a website from scratch uh, for a VC company or create positioning and messaging and kind of marketing um, 
content for a, VC, a new VC firm in the Middle East. And that was like my first client um, because they needed um, an integrated set of uh, kind of productizing their financial offering. And as a cherry on top, they wanted to see some media publications as well. And that's also what we did. That's why I think it's a strategic communications consultancy with Exilion that we're doing more than just like public, only public relations. Uh, I really have experience in uh, marketing communications and web development and all of that I was able to bring on board with Exilion to just help clients who need a little bit, you know, a complex approach to setting up their communications specifically. So when we use the phrase strategic communications, and when we're specifically talking about the strategic communications that you do, um, it's a phrase that gets thrown around a lot, strategic mm -hmm. communications. How do you define it and how do you put it into practice with your clients? Oh, that's a great, great question. I think strategy is something that is, I think it's it's a little bit of a cargo cult you know, when people talk of strategy. And I think we should blame uh, the big four for that. Those are the folks who kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, made it almost like a religion that you need, to, like if you're consulting, it has to be strategic. So if like, if you say you're a tactical consultant, consultant this would be, I think, you know, unappreciated <laughs> by my clients. Like tactical consultancy versus strategic sounds cooler, right? But um, reality of it is that um, so many things uh, when you we are all outsourcing as a company because I've worked in house as well as in the, on an agency side. Both I know you have done that as well. You know that many tasks that people outsource can be very practical and hands on, like to distribute a press release, you know, to write a press release. And this can be an agency that's just doing that. And when you have an in-house person, you it's easily to do. You know, you, you have the strategy that is developed in-house and the business goals are also uh, set in-house and you just outsource some of the practicalities of communications work. Um, this is one case. With me, um, I'm more acting as semi in-house outsource player uh, to do a more full service situation. This is where I talk to the business leaders and oftentimes my client is the CEO or founder or shareholder of a company rather than, for instance, a PR director or a marketing director in the company. Oftentimes they don't even have this role yet. So what I do is I talk to CEO, for instance, about their business goals. And then I come up with a, an approach how communications can help solve those, you know, not issues, but goals and meet those goals and help to achieve them uh, in the long run. And I do both. So I kind of strategize a little bit with the team and then I do the tactics of how we reach that in, in the course of six months, one year, or maybe three years uh, period of time and what channels we need to set up, um, what types of messages we need to develop. This is where I work closely with the team to find those you know, special voice that they need uh, for their communications, the positioning they need for new products launches. That's something also we often do. So a company wants to launch a new product, how they go to market. This is where I can come in and help them do the go to market strategy that includes communications. And then we do the execution as well for them. So it's uh, more like those, you know, two two fa two facets um, of work that we do. Uh, that can be challenging, though, especially if you're coming into an organization as you described that maybe doesn't have a communicator on the inside or someone who is involved in some sort of whether it's public relations or internal communications or you know what what have you. Um, how do you and and you talk about creating a narrative from scratch? 
How do you get that ball rolling with people who, you know, kind of understand, well, we kind of want something that looks like this, but we don't know how to do it. We don't know what to do. Are, are you starting at ground level with them and working your way up with the CEO or how, how do you get that kicked off? Uh, wow, this is really in the nitty gritty of how I'm working. <laughs> I love this. So um, I've told you that I'm also an executive coach. Uh, to CEOs and founders. And oftentimes this really helps to work with people who have not done communications work themselves uh, is where I do a little bit of coaching and educating on the role of communications in business for them. And from this position, this is why I'm a consultant, right? Uh, in the first place, I consult them uh, on how communications can help them achieve their business goals. And the types of business goals we're dealing with, one I've mentioned is go to market. So a new product is launched uh, or a new brand. Uh, the other one is fundraising and investment relations. Uh, this is something that I deal with a lot, not only with startups, but for instance, VC capital funds, they also have LP relations. These people are also investors to them, but they just bring, you know, large sums of money <laughs> in. Um, and um, this is, I, and also, you know, this is a complex project where oftentimes they need guidance. The CEOs need guidance from a communications professional uh, that they trust who can explain some things to them and can also show them the inside workings. So this is where I really am helpful because I have worked through my career, I have mostly worked on this level of direct report to the CEO. And I think this is very helpful in my work where I can really talk in the business language with them, you know, to be understood. And to, I think this is what, every PR professional has a challenge with, right? How you explain the value of PR to business, right? To even to marketing, sometimes it's hard to explain to our own, you know, peers in, in marketing, for instance, not talking about like shareholders. Uh, but this is where I really, really, I think do well when I explain the value to the business of P uh, basically, yeah. And so getting a, a program jump started. Uh, in speaking their language. Um, are there certain pieces that you draw out of them in the beginning? I mean, is it something like the bio or the mission statement of the company? Or, you know, how do you start to arrange those building blocks into that narrative that you eventually want to tell about the company or the product or the service or the whatever you're promoting? I think... Uh, what really wor works well for me, and just for my recent experience, I help a tech stars company uh, with a new product launch. And we just recently had a meeting with the CEO where we spoke mostly on their business goals, on their funding strategy, how they want to fund the company in the next year, what types of investors they're looking for, what types of uh, clients they're aiming for, what types of products they want to launch. So it's almost like a case study in a business school type of discussion. Um, then I ask for the information on the particular products that they want to launch, where I can research a little bit on them. And after that, I ask a few questions on that helped me shape their understanding. So I think this is a good trick that I can advise to all professionals in the PR field uh, to build a questionnaire where you ask the questions that kind of help to lead uh, your uh, um, the, 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 the second party a little bit. So how this helps is it's a little bit on the side of like customer development uh, type of research questions is like, how much uh, funding do you plan to raise? How, uh, what types of investors are you going to have on board? Can you make a, an announcement with one of those investors? Can you ask for a quote 
with one of your VC funds? Uh, can you, like, are you able to, and basically you kind of form the questions in the way that they educate the people of the possibilities with PR for a certain project from the questionnaire. This is where they kind of start to think uh, in the right direction of building the communications. So am I sounding clear? Like this is just. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and you've, um, you know, there is real value for startups in PR. It's probably the most um, nimble and cost effective way for a startup to begin to gain a bit of visibility as mm -hmm. opposed to a paid marketing campaign uh, or an advertising campaign, which can get very, very expensive very, very quickly. Not saying that they're bad, but they're just sometimes out of reach for a startup that is really trying to keep their margins as, you know, as, as close as possible um, and, and make sure that they squeeze every dollar, you know, in, and put it into their product, quite frankly. Um, are, there, are there types of PR that you advise startups to get into? Is it something like thought leadership? Is it, you know, um, uh, product visibility? Um, is it, you know, reporter relations? What are the types of PR that maybe you, you advise people start out with um, when, they're, when, they're, when they're in a startup situation? Oh, that's just a great question. And I really, really had the opportunity to work through all of those questions because uh, there have been over almost 10 years now, I'm a mentor at Techstars, uh, which is a large acceleration program, uh, US funded, uh, but also working worldwide. And I've been a mentor in Berlin, London, Melbourne, um, and I found a few things that work for, mostly work for all of the startup companies, which are in the tech space, uh, both on the B2B and B2C side. It really depends on the type of product they're working on, but there are some similarities in the you know, first steps that a company can work on in order to utilize the PR. And there are a few, questions that need to be answered. So why a startup and when a startup needs PR? So first is when they need funding, but all startups basically will eventually need some amount of funding, maybe not in the first year, but maybe on the second or third year of existence. Um, it's also when you need to hire new talent and startups need to compete with those large big tech companies like Facebook, Google, and Microsoft for the top talent. Of course, they don't need as much top talent, but they need the best people who they compete with for, you know, with, a, you know, Google for uh, amazing benefits prog programs those large companies have and startups don't. So how do you attract top talent? And this is where communications, employer brand, and PR really, really works for a company a new company um, in attracting top talent. And the third one is probably building loyalty and uh, loyalty in clients or in partners, depending on is it a B2B or a B2C product. So B2B meaning that you are selling to other businesses and B2C meaning that you're saying selling direct to customers. Um, so, these are the instances when the PR might need, uh, the startup might need PR <laughs> or PR might need a startup. I can say that too, I guess. Um, and um, how to start. So first of all, like you don't have a budget, right? As a startup, you m most likely don't have a budget yet. Um, so this is where a founder, and as you mentioned, thought leadership, it's really clever for a founder to lead the communications efforts. And I always tell like Techstars founders and other companies, uh, founders I work with as advisor that, um, hey, you know, you speak with investors all the time. It's all like a part of a tech uh, CEO job is to communicate with investors on a constant basis. Just include a little of percent of your time to devoting to speak with the audiences as well. So it can be in a form of thought leadership um, on social media and Twitter or X. Uh, now X is great for that. LinkedIn is great for B2B audiences, partners, investors. Uh, I think 
other places, very unconventional yet, but I think they will become more and more popular, is Reddit or Quora, where you can build a following and you can build a brand, uh, a name brand for yourself by being a part of the discussion. And of course, you know, more classical thought leadership is when you write uh, an opinion on a uh, industrial or niche topic you're working in and submitting this to an outlet uh, or a media, you know, basically. And there is, um, of course, a little bit of investment of time into that, but I'm amazed how much free information is available on how to pitch uh, thought pieces to the media, how to write them, how to do social media, uh, thought leadership. There's just a huge amount of free information available online. It's just that you need to devote the time into that. Um, another and, option- And you've, you've yeah. done this yourself as, as a new CEO. Um, you've done this yourself, getting your yourself thought leadership media attention, earned media attention. Has it been um, productive for you in advancing your agency? Uh, well, uh, it's it's funny you ask because like oh, two days ago, I got a lead from LinkedIn for a project that several several thousand dollar project from LinkedIn, and my thought leadership stuff just there and I have not been doing it I think uh enough <laughs> but it's still so you can never do it enough right you can... <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean but I mean like uh what what is enough and this is I think good hint to just understand and get the picture for people so post at least like two times a week is mostly enough and I'm posting like once a month and still getting paid leads from there you know that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. And I mean, yeah. I mean, definitely you can do more. Like if I post, so let's, let's see, maybe in a couple of months of my, like I start to be consistent, I will get tens of thousands of dollars from leads on LinkedIn. Right. We will see. Wouldn't I will report that, to you. Right. <laughs> I will tell you how this works. <laughs> so you advise uh, CEOs or anyone who's trying to raise their visibility um, to really just get consistent with it, get into a groove, um, be posting things that are interesting um, and and sharing their unique perspective on whatever topic they want to write about. Absolutely. Uh, and actually, you know, one of the advices, one of the top accelerators, Y Combinator is giving to their founders is the ability to translate your thoughts into writing of any form is a superpower for, for a CEO. And I can say not only of a startup, but of any company. Uh, we want to hear people that are doing the actual business. Uh, we want to understand how they are thinking. We want to know their practices. We want to know their attitudes. People are generally interested in other people. and you know, doing business in this time is uh, a challenge, but also something that is a great narrative and a great story to tell. Uh, and I believe thinking about your offer, your product and what you're doing and crafting the message to that audience that you want to uh, attract, it's, it's just a great way of putting your brand and building your personal brand with time. And I also just like to add here, I think of it as a compound interest in finance, I mean, of PR and thought leadership effort. So you do a little bit, but constantly, and then in a little bit of time, like from six to 12 months, it can get back to you with great returns. No doubt, no doubt in my mind. Well, this has been a great conversation, Liliana. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. We are going to segue now into the rapid fire question portion of our podcast. This is where we steal a page from inside the actor studio, ask our guests a series of rapid fire questions meant to elicit a simple answer, maybe a laugh or two. Liliana, with your indulgence, let's begin rapid fire question number one. What is your favorite news source? TechCrunch. Oh, dig it. Good outlet. Good outlet. <laughs> Uh, rapid fire question number two, what's your favorite social media platform? 
uh, lately Reddit. I'm a moderator of an AI community, uh, top 1% on Reddit, and I love it. Great, great stuff. I, and not enough people use Reddit, I think. I know people who like really use it, and you sound like one of those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that uh, it's a very strong community and a lot of interesting, clever people there, and you can find any topic, anything you can find on Reddit. And actually, latest data tells us that people search for stuff on TikTok and Reddit more now than they do on Google. I believe it. I believe it. Rapid fire question number three, coffee or alcohol? Coffee, 100%. There we go. Rapid fire question number four, <laughs> what's your favorite on the run food? Hamburgers. <laughs> oh, good stuff. <laughs> Hamburger or cheeseburger? Okay, cheeseburger. You got me there. <laughs> okay, <bye. laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. And rapid fire question number five, Liliana, what do you want to be after you finish this career? I want to be top CEO's executive coach in the Silicon Valley. That is a very ambitious and specific goal. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having well, me. Liliana, it was so much fun. Yeah, Liliana, this has been a great conversation. Please let people know how they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Liliana Pertanava. You can find me on Twitter or X, Lilian Pertanava. And that's where I spend most of my time. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll look you up. Thanks again, Liliana. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Please remember to subscribe to the show. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at The PR Podcast and send us a question or a comment. Our intro is by Christopher Apple. You can find him and his fantastic photography on Instagram at Christopher underscore A-P-P-O-L-D-T. Check him out there and hire him for all of your photography needs. You can find me online at Jody Fisher on all the socials and on the web at JodyFisherPR.com. We'll see you next time on the PR Podcast.